So welcome to Volume 1, Episode 2 of The Startup Dudes. I'm Todd. This is Bill. And more, we're going to have a lot of interesting subjects to cover for you in the future. I mean, hundreds from, you know, importing to product development. And we're going to try to keep it micro and small pieces so that it's really useful to you and meaningful. And today's subject will be... Non-disclosure agreements, also known as the NDA. The reason why we wanted to start with this is because uh, you're going to... Well, we think you're gonna learn some things today about it that you may not hear everywhere. We're not gonna get into so much the structure of it. We're gonna to touch upon that, but really the purpose behind it. And the reason why we're talking about it now is because this is maybe one of the first things that you would bring when you're proposing your new concept or idea. So what's the purpose of an NDA, Todd? So an NDA, if you do it correctly, is a legal instrument. It's a contract between the person or company disclosing the information or the concept or the idea to someone that you think you has interest in it, whether it be to form a company with them, whether it be for a licensing opportunity, fundraising, anything like that. So typically you'll see the discloser and the recipient as the way it's described in an NDA. I've heard that there's a couple of different aspects of the purpose of an NDA. Uh, one is legal, which I, Todd has touched on, which is the, to protect your idea. And then uh, I've also heard that there's some marketing aspects to it as well. What do they mean by that? So on the legal side, you know, if, if you're presenting an idea where you don't have it protected yet, right? Let's say it's at the concept stage, you can't protect a concept through copyright. So really the only way you could do it is by contract. And what you're doing is you're basically saying, you promise not to talk about what I'm gonna share with you today. And if you do, there are legal consequences, usually in the form of damages. But tell us a little bit about your experience with, with people coming in to present concepts when you were at Disney. Well, when I was at Disney, it's, it's really a good question because you're, you're right, Todd. It depends upon who, who the parties are. When I was working for Disney, we actually had a policy where we didn't want to hear what your idea was. I mean, it sounds almost unbelievable when you think of it in the context of an idea company like Disney. But they were worried about if they listen to your idea, they may be, Disney may be thinking of something similar in a different department, and maybe I don't know it. And then uh, we go out forward with the, uh, the idea in the other department, and then you make a claim that, hey, I disclosed that to you, uh, Bill, when you were with Disney, and you've knocked me off, you've copied me, so I think I have some damages. So we really didn't want to hear it. Um, so we didn't use in NDAs, we didn't give you an NDA, and you didn't give us an NDA. Um, so that's kind of an interesting aspect of it, but uh, should I touch on the marketing side of it? Yeah, I was going to say, let's talk about that in a sec. I was going to say that then there's a decision that has to be made, right? If, you, if you're the inventor, you're the artist, you're the concept guy or gal, you've got to make a decision about whether or not you're willing to take on that risk. I always tell clients and people that I'm working with that, what are you going to do, keep it in the drawer? I mean, there is going to be some risk there. And this, is, this goes back to how you present yourself. And so that's part of the marketing side, right? If you come in and you've got your stuff together, you understand what your legal rights are, you're working with people that maybe you've heard from others are trustworthy, then your risk level goes down. Mm -hmm. But there's always gonna be risk, right? I mean, if you go in and talk about an idea, someone could, could take it, that's potentially. Right. That's right. So what's the marketing aspect of it? Well, uh, I always felt that if you, some people, with the ideas or with the new business concepts are reluctant to ask somebody to sign an NDA. They're afraid that they'll be embarrassed and no, I'm not going to sign your NDA. Or I'm going to sue. And then what do I do? You know, once the guy says that. But I always felt that if you as the inventor or the, the, the startup company asks for an NDA to be signed, you are implicitly saying that I think what I have is of value. So there's a real marketing aspect to it. You're appearing to be more marketable, to be more valuable. So I say, go and ask for it, even if 50% of the people don't sign it. Yeah. 
I tend to agree. Um, again, the, the idea, by the way, you might wonder what's the legal reason why you can't get copyright protection on an idea. And it actually goes back to the Constitution. The Founding Fathers wanted people to take whatever idea that they've got and, and use it, exploit it. And that was all about getting our country off the ground, right? And so you don't get the benefits of legal protection if you're not going to actually go out there and exploit it. When we talk about trademarks later, there's a specific section on the trademark application that asks you to show that you're using it. So it's really the same idea. Um, so where do you get an NDA? I mean, I, we're gonna provide an example of one that we use, um, but we'd obviously advise you to have an attorney look at one that you might be using. But um, recommend to keep it kind of short. Short is better. Yeah. Uh, it looks less intimidating. You're more likely to get it signed. Um, I personally, I tend to want to sign them. I want to hear what someone has to say. I want to encourage them. I want to see if I can help them. So I generally sign it. Todd takes a quick look and see if there's anything that's unusually strange about it. And uh, I would say 90% of them, we you review them and we say go ahead and sign it. Yeah, I mean, there there's so many out there and they all look really the same in many ways. The thing you should be looking for that you would not want to sign and I've seen this, is where they sneak in something that says that we can take your idea. You know, they don't say it quite that blatantly, but it'll say essentially anything you show to us, we have the right to take and use. And obviously that's, that's, that's actually worse than not having an NDA, right? Or than having an NDA, so. Uh, but we'll, we'll provide an example of one that you might consider using. So Todd, are NDAs difficult to enforce? Any thoughts, opinions on that? So, okay, so you get to the point where let's say you've got someone that signed it and they literally took your idea and began to use it and now they're making a bunch of money with it. You have a decision to make now as well. What, how do I use this NDA to my benefit? That's why we signed it, right? So you would be able to sign for breach of contract, essentially. Did they, looking at the terms of the NDA, as I said, it's a contract. Did they uh, breach any aspect of it? And if so, you'd be able to seek recourse in the courts. The question is gonna be, how are you going to pay for that? And what are the damages? So in most cases, a small startup, maybe the damages are insignificant, maybe they're 10,000 or less. In that case, you go to small claims court and pursue it. The good thing about small claims court, which, by the way, which is not a bad thing, I've been there many times myself, is that you get the issue resolved right away and you don't have to have legal representation. In fact, in most courts, at small claims level, you can't. But if you've got something much more significant, an example that comes to mind is you, let's say you presented a screenplay to someone and the studio is now making a movie, and they've made a movie and there's all this money attached to it, then you probably would want to go to the courts for recourse, and in that case, since the damages are much higher, you'd be going to the Superior Court. The question is, you're going to have to get an attorney, right? Who's going to pay for that? And those are the types of projects that almost, almost never are on contingency. So you're going to have to pay an attorney at the hour minimum level, which can get quite, kind of expensive, three, four hours an hour, but you may have to do it. So a couple of quick uh, quick questions before we wind up this little piece on NDA. What is a mutual NDA? It's a good question. Um, I One of the changes that I often make when I'm presented with an NDA is uh, adding a mutual NDA or mutual confidentiality provision, which is where the party presenting it to us, we would also ask them to commit to not talking about what we give them. So it's like having two disclosers and two recipients, and that can be accomplished by adding a paragraph. And one other quick uh, quick question about NDAs. I've heard that there's a non-circumvention uh, issue that's sometimes frequently associated with an NDA or tied into an NDA. What's that all about? So non-circumvention is essentially you're, you're making somebody promise not to go around you. This happens a lot in supplier contracts or where you're, you've got a factory involved or something like that, or maybe even someone is giving you tips or leads, you'll, you'll part of your agent, right? Yeah. You don't want to get cut out of the process. Exactly. Um, so that can be accomplished and putting that in the NDA as well, where you're essentially asking the recipient also promise not to go around you. And there's a whole list of the types of people that you wouldn't want them to go around to. Yeah. So that's, um, anything else you want to add, Todd? I mean, we wanted to make these things brief so you don't get bored. You know, give you some information and then we'll move on to the next topic. Uh, I think keep them short. Um, I think always walk in with one, have it on your desktop or your phone or however you, you, you're, um, you're, whatever you're using for your document. Um, um, I'm trying to think of anything else here. 
probably that's that's really about it. Uh, have legal counsel look at it if you're not sure. That's always a, a good idea. Get someone, get an attorney in your network that you trust. It's not going to bury you with legal fees. If it's something quick and easy, you can always send it to us. If you look in the in the notes section of each of the videos each week, we're going to have information about how to contact us and um, also provide some information on NDAs as well. Sounds good. Well, thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. Thank you for uh, listening. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.